So maybe you have been considering using oral minoxidil for stimulating hair growth, hair thickening and stabilizing hair loss if you have androgenetic alopecia. And you are wondering which oral minoxidil should I use? The one that I put under my tongue as a sublingual version of minoxidil or the tablet that I just swallow? In this video, I'm going to be talking about which one is more effective and which one is less likely to give you side effects. So make sure you stay tuned. And before we start, as always, shout out to our sponsor, CoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. Now, before I share with you which minoxidil version is better, oral or sublingual, what does the research suggest, let's talk about briefly how does minoxidil actually become active because this is crucial to understand before. Now, if you've been using minoxidil topically 5%, it is actually inactive when you apply it on the scalp and it becomes active in your hair follicles. There is sulfotransferase enzyme, this SULT1A2, that activates minoxidil into minoxidil sulfate. Now, some people don't have enough of that sulfotransferase and that's why recently we have been seeing studies that suggest that only 30 to 40 percent of individuals actually respond to minoxidil 5 percent and the rest does not. Some dermatologists and hair transplant doctors worldwide started to recommend many years ago already, but now it becomes like more studied, started to recommend oral minoxidil to combat this problem. If you are taking minoxidil in the oral form as a tablet or a capsule, you have two ways how to administer it. First way would be the oral route and the second way would be the sublingual route. If you take it orally, you have a tablet, usually it's a capsule that you will just swallow then it first travels to your intestines, through your stomach, and then eventually reaches the liver where it's gonna be activated. It's gonna be converted from the inactive minoxidil into active minoxidil sulfate. That's the ingredient that will actually stimulate the hair follicles and thicken them. It needs to be activated in the liver via the enzyme sulfotransferase. If you take it sublingually, however, you will not swallow it, but you will put it under the tongue. It's better to drink uh, water 10 to 15 minutes before you do it, so you will promote the saliva that will help you break it down faster. Sometimes it can take 10, 20 seconds. By some people, it can take a couple minutes for sublingual minoxidil to be properly absorbed. It takes much faster for sublingual minoxidil to be absorbed compared to oral minoxidil. Now, the advantage of the sublingual administration of oral minoxidil will be that once it's gonna become dissolved, it reaches immediately your bloodstream in the inactive form. It's still not bioavailable, it's still not activated. It then travels all the way up to the hair follicles where it's gonna be converted into the active minoxidil sulfate via the sulfotransferase in the follicle, not in the liver. So with the oral minoxidil that you swallow, you will get more active minoxidil released into your bloodstream, whereas with the sublingual, you will not get active minoxidil released into the bloodstream. And that's where dermatologists and hair loss researchers started thinking about that the sublingual version can have less side effects and potentially even better efficacy if we compare sublingual to oral minoxidil dose per dose. And now let's talk about how much hairs per square centimeter can minoxidil grow if you take it orally and swallow it versus you use it sublingually. It has been studied in two studies, one on sublingual, one on oral. Both have 24 week duration, that means six months. Both include subjects uh, between Norwood 3 and Norwood 5 on the Norwood Hamilton class. So that's why I decided to put those studies together. As you can see here already in this chart, in the first row, you can see the dose that uh, has been used. And this is already kind of like a summary that I made for you. 0.45 milligram is the starting dose that they use for sublingual minoxidil. Then they tripled the dose onto 1.35 and then tripled again on 4.05 uh, milligram. I don't know why they decided to triple it like that, but that's uh, what we have. And then five milligram uh, study on oral minoxidil as a uh, tablet that was swallowed. Now, hair count improvements, that's what you can see in the second row and there are some values already. The numbers represent hair count improvements in terms of new hairs growing per square centimeter after 24 weeks and they were also monitored by phototrichogram. So they could be like 
precisely quantified as you can see them here. So with the 0.45 milligram sublingual minoxidil, uh, they observed four more hairs on the front per square centimeter and nine on the vertex. With 1.35, uh, that is to triple the dose, they did not really get the triple the effect on the front. They got only 10 hairs more. 12 would be more like tripling, but it was only 10 more on the front per square centimeter and 26 more on the vertex, which is almost the tripling. And with the 4.05 milligram sublingual minoxidil, they got 38 hairs more on the front and 88 more on the vertex per square centimeter, which are already very, very substantial hair gains if you consider that a healthy non-balding scalp could have on average around 200 hairs per square centimeter you know could be two to three hundred three hundred if you have exceptionally thick hair and many multiple follicles producing many hairs so again 38 to 88 is these are huge numbers if we talk about uh, five milligram oral minoxidil a day observed 35.1 uh, hairs more growing on a square centimeter on the vertex what i want to say with that is that if you compare 4.0 5 milligram sublingual minoxidil to 5 milligram oral minoxidil, the vertex hair count improvements are more than twice as good. That means that a sublingual minoxidil dose per dose, you know, comparing to oral minoxidil is superior in terms of efficacy. Now we can be pretty clear about that when it comes down to vertex hair count improvement. We cannot say much about the frontal uh, zone hair count improvement because that has not been studied in the 5 milligram oral minoxidil study. So that's that. Now, how likely is it that you get side effects from minoxidil uh, orally versus sublingually? One important proxy that we could be taking here for observation would be the minoxidil concentration in your blood serum 30 minutes post dose. Both of these studies done on sublingual versus oral minoxidil were actually measuring that uh, serum minoxidil concentration. And in the first row, again, you can see the same doses of minoxidil in the sublingual and oral form. And in the second row, you can see plasma concentrations. You can notice that uh, although we don't have the precise uh, concentration for each of the sublingual doses, we get a range that is between 0.3 and 5.3 nanogram per milliliter. Obviously, if you take around 0.45 milligrams sublingually, the uh, concentration will be around 0.3. And if you take close to 4 milligrams of sublingual minoxidil, the concentration should be around 5.3 nanograms per milliliter. The average was around 1.6 or 1.7 nanograms per milliliter. Now, if we jump into the oral minoxidil, the concentrations are significantly higher. By 2.5 milligram oral minoxidil, it will be 16.8 nanogram per milliliter. And with 5 milligram, if you double the dose orally, you get more than the double of the minoxidil in your blood plasma, concentration of 37.2 nanogram per milliliter. Now, after looking at these two comparisons, the first one that is comparing the efficacy of oral and sublingual minoxidil, and the second one, its concentration in the plasma, it seems to be a no-brainer for most of the guys probably to switch to a sublingual version of minoxidil. Now, if you ever consider that, I'm not recommending this to, I'm not a doctor, this is just for educational purposes, but if you ever do it, always consult it first with your pharmacy that is compounding the oral minoxidil and ask them if they are able to compound you a sublingual version of the tablet because not every tablet or capsule could be used sublingually. I ask my pharmacy specifically that is compounding the oral minoxidil for swallowing if I can open the tablet and put it under my tongue and let it dissolve. They said it's possible, but it's not possible with every medication. So you always need to discuss either with your physician or who is prescribing it to you or with your compounding pharmacy. There is one issue with uh, sublingual minoxidil, however, and it's that since it's not going to travel to the liver and being metabolized there first and then converted into minoxidil sulfate in the liver, you kind of rely on having su sufficient sulfur transferase in the scalp because the sublingual minoxidil, since it cannot be converted and activated in the liver, it needs to be activated elsewhere and it will be your scalp. So if you have not responded to the conventional topical minoxidil 5% because you did not have enough sulfur transferase, likely you will not respond or you may not respond to the sublingual minoxidil. And the only option you have, you have two options, 
either do the microneedling additionally to stimulate the absorption of the topical minoxidil and potentially even upregulate the sulfotransferase that way, or you use minoxidil in the oral removal form as a tablet and you just swallow it instead of just putting it under the tongue. Because if you use these two options as a non-responder to the conventional 5% minoxidil, you will get a guarantee uh, that some hair stimulation and hair thickening of the minoxidil will be achieved because it will have the chance to be properly activated and properly metabolized onto the minoxidil sulfate. Now, I've been using minoxidil topically for many, many years. It worked initially, but over time it lost the effectiveness because I wasn't using it together with finasteride. Right now I'm taking finasteride as well in the topical form and I started with oral minoxidil like eight months ago and uh, one month ago I switched to using it sublingually because of less minoxidil exposure in the plasma that I wanted to achieve and I also wanted to uh, take minoxidil orally that will become more of it kind of a bioavailable so it can be more effective per certain dose. So I didn't increase the dose of my oral minoxidil, I just changed the administration route and now I'm going to be updating you in my usual monthly oral minoxidil updates to see uh, where this change has made any impact on my results you know side effect wise and you know improvement wise and let you know guys so make sure you stay tuned for more info about my one-on-one -on -one consulting services check out the link in the video description below where you can learn more about how i can help you achieve your hair goals faster more efficiently without trial and error and uh, bad mistakes that can cost you money stress and time utilizing hair loss treatments hair transplants and scalp micropigmentation looking forward to helping you one-on-one -on -one and see you soon in another video take care Thank you.